is Java. So Java is an object-oriented programming language. And when I say object-oriented programming language, that means it follows the that paradigm. And what is object-oriented programming? So it takes real life situation as object. It takes a real life like an entity. So it tries to model a, a, a real life situation like an object. And what is an object? So you define an object as a blueprint for a, for a, for, sorry, a class is a blueprint for an object and an object is an instance of a class. So let me use a real life situation to explain that. So let's say, for example, you, you want to buy a house. Or let's say you want to buy a land in an estate that you want to build. So in that estate, they already have their they have their their def, the way their houses there look like. They have their structure, how their houses should look like. So that structure that they give you in this situation is called the class. So a class is a blueprint for an object. It's like a recipe. Let's say you want to cook. So that's why if you go to, let's say you go to any Domino's um, pizza um, outlets or shop, their, their pizza always tastes the same. They have a recipe, you get. So each of them have the recipe. So even if you go to any mega chicken outlet, that rice still tastes the same way. That's because they've gotten the recipe. So that recipe that they've gotten is the class. The same situation I'm talking about in the estates. That's plan they give them that blueprint that is given to them okay so you want to build a house in our estate okay then this is how the house should look like because this is how the houses in this estate looks like so that structure that they give you that is the blueprint so that is the class so now let me explain an object so an object is an instance of a class it's a copy of a class so meaning that then you go there and you build your own house. So you've taken the blueprint they gave you, then you build your house. So your house is an object. Another person takes their blueprints, builds their house. So you have like so many objects of that class in that estate. You get. So, but then there's something unique about that object. So even if your house structure looks like the class that they gave you, your house is still unique to you. Because the picture that you let me, let me say you you, ha, you a picture you want a picture in your parlor is it's rare that it's not possible that it's the same picture that the other house also hangs. So it's not it's not possible that okay the same color you used to color inside your house is the same. There's something that will be unique to you. So that's an object. So the object is a copy of a class. So it's an yes a copy of a class or it's an instance of a class with its own unique attributes. So it is still unique in its way, but then it's a copy of that class, but it's unique. The same way if I say, okay, all males are from the class Adam. Yes. So if you see a male now, you can know that, okay, he has, okay, some special characteristics that make okay, you can identify him with the class Adam. Do you get? But then he's still unique. His name is different. He has different qualities. So that's an object of a class. So a class is a blueprint for an object. And an object is an instance of a class. So this thing comes in play in Java. It's very important in Java because in Java we don't, unlike some, there, there's, there are different paradigms of programming. I think there is the, is it the structured? Anyways, but in Java, you tend to not repeat yourself because let's say that there was no class, there was no blueprint. You see that every object they'll be they'll be defining, they'll be repeating themselves. So then those parts that are supposed to everybody's supposed to share. Then this object will you see this object starting afresh, this object starting afresh, repeating the same code, repeating the same code, which is not supposed to be. So Java helps to like remove all of that repetition by creating a class and then having objects from that class. So in a class we have to we have we have two things that comprise it, that a class comprises of. So in a class, you have the attributes and you have the behaviors. So now let me use the, let me use the class of, um, 
let me use the class of male or the class of Adam, okay? The characteristics there will be like, what are the the visible features what are the character what are, what are things you can see like the color of the skin the the height the st stature those are the characteristics those visible qualities and if i'm talking about the characteristics of that estate of the class that estate um the blueprint that was given to you in that estate we'll talk about the color we'll talk about the the um the number of stairs the the type of building those are the characteristics then the behaviors are like the they are the action parts like the the doing like the verb for example what can what can you do so as, as a class of me what can you do you can jump you can walk you can move you get you can those are the action parts so every class must have the attributes and the behaviors so that should that's the foundation of object-oriented programming and java is an example of object-oriented programming even python is an, is an example too so you need to understand what object-oriented programming is in the first place for you to be able to work with um java and other oop programming languages and then also before i go into the code 